today we're going to be installing the 4D Tech motion unlock. Hoping to get the camera to work at something in excess of six miles an hour. The way it is from Ford, I'm rolling along here at four miles per hour. And it's still showing the back, it's showing the tailgate. If I get above six miles an hour, it's going to turn off. And there it goes, just turned off. So now if you hit the button, it says for your safety and blah, 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 you're going too fast basically. The motion unlock should take care of that. And I'm hoping that it'll also give me access to the tailgate because if you're under six miles an hour and you hit the camera, it gives you the third brake light camera. What I'm trying to get is my tailgate camera. So hopefully with the motion unlock and then the two slash three camera unlock, that's all gonna install right behind here. Hopefully I can get access to those while driving so I can keep an eye on my trailer situation. So stay tuned, we'll rip this thing apart and put it in. First thing we're gonna do, disconnect the negative battery terminals. This is a diesel, so we got two batteries up under there. So two negative terminals, that's a 10 millimeter socket, it'll get that done for you. Next, we're gonna take this speaker grill out. I'm working with two bones here, and it's got, they're stiffer than you think, so just be prepared. It, it takes a little more than you might imagine, and they sound pretty bad, but there's a total of four of them. We're gonna get that popped out and move on. With the speaker grill removed, again, it's four of those, and they are pretty stiff, so be prepared to wrestle around. It doesn't hurt anything. Nothing looks damaged up, but it's stiffer than you might imagine. Set that out of the way. Then you got two seven millis right down in these holes. Just be careful, you're working right here by the glass, so don't swing your ratchet too much and pop your glass, all right? We've got our little seven millis out. They look just like that. I ended up doing mine with a flex head ratchet, a short extension, and a seven mil socket. You could probably do it with something else, but you're certainly not gonna get it with a wrench. So stick those to the side, and we'll get this thing pulled up here. Now you gotta be careful that you unplug the wire that goes to this little speaker in the center. So get this thing pulled up and get that wire out of there. With our seven millis out, you're gonna find yourself with three clips, just like we had before on the speaker cover. And again, here's that wire that we gotta get disconnected. Now I have the 67 designs and it almost works kind of hand, like a handle. You could see how I got a handle on it. And so I was able to pull on my 67 design and get that up. Just be gentle with it. You don't want to tear anything up, but this is the wire you're after. It's got just a little squeeze. That is where my pointer finger is right now. We're going to get this disconnected and get this whole tray out of the way. Just like that. Once the tray is removed, you're going to find yourself with seven, uh, two more seven millis. They go right here. And they are exactly like the other one, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. There they are. I'm just going to throw them all in my little cup holder and pull this thing apart. The bezel's gonna pop out just like we've already seen before. It's the same kind of clippies on there. Next thing you have to do is just unplug all the wires. It looks like there is a total of five different looms going in here. One loom here, one loom here, one loom here, and then you got two back behind here. There's actually nothing going to the HVAC controls. So we'll get those unplugged and get this set out of the way. This is the bezel out. You can see all the red clips. Looks like you have a total of eight. Here's your three wiring harnesses going into the top and your two down below. I will say this one here is like one of the ones you gotta squeeze like halfway back. And this one here is when you squeeze at the end. So that was a little bit tricky. Then these guys here, let me just set this out of the way. I'll show you. These here, you gotta use a fingernail and get that. And it's kind of tough to drive a fingernail in there and pull back. So those took a little bit longer than I would have anticipated. So just a heads up there. Once you get to the screen, you're gonna find that it has six more of the same seven millimeters. They match the other four that we've already removed. So now we have a total of 10 sitting down in our cup holder. I did have to have a magnet because they fall down to like a little shelf right here. So both sides, I couldn't get it to it with my fingertip. So used a magnet to pull those out. And I did pull the, this wiring harness comes through this rectangle right here. I just pulled it out of the way to give me a little more room while I'm working right here. We're at the back of the radio now. Once you get those six, seven millimeter bolts pull, uh, pulled, it's no problem. I, it just slides out, it just sits on these pins. This is the connector we're after. This is gonna give us the motion unlock. And so the way this works is it's got a little, that's a push button right there. And that's what catches this gray. So I've already pushed it. So we'll pull that up and then that comes out 
the can opener is going to plug in which obviously it's a handful but you get the gist that's going to plug in there now and then the old harness will go to that you'll find somewhere back in there to zip tie that box that's going to take care of the the motion unlock and then this is the two three camera and where it goes is right here this module right here and it's got two plugs on it i've already got the locks undone but they look just like this and it is a squeeze you squeeze back here to get the lock unlocked so that's how you do those all right we got all our wires in and i'll show you kind of what i did here i put the two can openers back to back and then just found a spot to zip tie them but they're they're secure in there hopefully they don't vibrate the f-450 vibrates like a son of a gun anyway so hopefully they stay pretty quiet and so now what we got to do we got to this is the uh, image processor. So we got everything plugged in there, zip tied that back. We've got these three to go back into the back of the radio. We got these two that go in towards the, uh, what is that? Not the HVAC, but right above that. So get these things plugged in and start snapping things back together. So we nearly got her whooped. All right, so we've got our six, seven millimeter bolts back in. That's holding the screen in. Make sure you get all five of your plugs now. You got the three again at the top and the two right here behind like your radio presets. Now we're ready to snap this thing back in. We'll have our two seven millimeters up top that holds this whole fascia on. We'll get our tray in. Make sure when you're putting your tray in that you don't forget your plug for your little speaker. I've actually done that before, so don't forget that. Then you'll put your last sevens in. Should be good to go, take it for a test drive. Our install video ended up bleeding over into a second day here, so now we can finalize our video. One thing to show you, I'm in reverse backing up. We got our typical camera. You got the plus sign to get down to the... Oh. Maybe that is no longer functional? Okay. Another thing, see how I just changed to an X? So it's gonna stay on now the whole time. So four or five miles an hour, eight, Okay, it would have kicked off long ago. You have to clear out every single time you go to reverse now. So, something to be aware of. And, I don't know that I used the zoom all that much, but apparently the zoom is now broken. And, I can't seem to make it work. Alright, so another demonstration. There we are, reverse. It's going to stay on. So, that's a little bit of an annoyance. It doesn't work like it used to. All right, but now we're going 14 miles an hour. I can see the Tana. If I hit the camera again, it just goes back to the screen. Again, Tana, screen. If I want to get to the bumper, I have to hit the end call twice, and you'll hear beep, beep. All right, so now I'm at the bumper. And if I don't hit the end call again, it'll cycle through. So I got Tana cover, tailgate. So it, there's no way out unless you hit the call button again. Here are two more beeps. Now it still doesn't go out on its own. You have to cycle through. So back to the Tana and now back to our radio screen. So it's not, you would think that double tapping this would exit it out. No, it basically just gives you the freedom to now exit out. So we do have some glitches. It, it doesn't work quite like I had planned. But overall, I do still think it's a nice feature. So that's my take on it. Quick as we get back to the house, I'll show you the tools that we used to do this swap or to do this install. And that way you guys don't have to make 20 trips back to the toolbox like we did. So hang loose, we'll get you that. A quick recap on what we used to put in the 4D Tech motion unlock and 2-3 camera unlock. First thing, you wanna make sure you disconnect your battery. So that's a 10 millimeter. I use a semi-deep. You could probably get by without a semi-deep. But 10 millimeter socket, a couple of bones. That's going to be what you use on the inside. After that, you get in, into all the 7 millimeter stuff. You can use it on a battery. Just again, be careful up around your windshield when you're taking those out. I did use a longer extension when I started taking the 6, 7 millimeters that hold the screen. When I took those out, I used the longer extension. Did end up having to use a magnet in that same spot to get the lowest two seven millimeter nuts or bolts rather and then zip tie everything up with some flush cuts that'll be it that's the tools that you need to get this job done